Hey guys, I'm here at Walmart to debunk some more skincare myths and share with you guys some dermatologist approved skincare hacks using simple, affordable, effective products that you might not have ever considered before. All right here for $6.84, we have Clitrimazole. They insist on calling this athlete's foot cream. That's not what you wanna use this for. Athlete's foot is not going to be super responsive to clitrimazole. Instead, let me tell you what this is actually good for. It's good for rashes that you get in the skin folds where you have overlying yeast. It's called a candidal intertrigo. What happens there is you have sweat collecting in the skin folds, breaks down the skin barrier, makes it more favorable to colonization with candida yeast. Now, when it comes to putting this on your feet, a situation where it can actually be helpful is you can actually get an intertrigo in the spaces between your toes. Uh, moisture traps in those web spaces, it can break down and then become colonized with bacteria and again, candidal yeast. This can really help. Not only can that occur in the web spaces between your toes, but it also can happen between your fingers. This can be especially an issue for people who have to wear really tight fitted shoes that aren't super breathable. They sweat a lot in their shoes and maybe the way that they're feet are and the anatomy of their toes, they have a little bit of an overlap, causes friction, all those things can lead to an intertrigo. So you want to keep that area as dry as possible, take measures to absorb excess moisture, like using a powder, um, changing your socks frequently, and then if you do develop uh, a little intertrigo there, it's called Erosio Interdigita Blastomycetica, EIB. This is this can be super helpful. This can also be helpful if you get angular chelitis. The corners of your mouth, you get a breakdown of the skin barrier at the corners of the mouth. And then the yeast, which naturally live in your mouth, can kind of take over, cause this painful, uncomfortable sores at the corners of the mouth. And this can definitely help. But for actual athlete's foot, this is not super helpful. What is super helpful, or can be super helpful, is actually, oops, Lamisil. Um, Lamisil is just a brand name. The actual drug is terbenafine. So terbenafin is what you want for actual athlete's foot. You can get brand name Lamisil or you can get the Equate version. Look at the price difference there. Same drug, different branding. When it comes to athlete's foot, which is caused by a type of fungus called a dermatophyte, or when it comes to that same little problem that can happen in the web spaces, the name of the game is controlling moisture and friction because a moisture leads to breakdown of the skin barrier and friction further aggravates that. So I like to recommend this. It's called Zeasorb AF. It says cures most, most athletes foot. That is a bit of a stretch. This has myconazole in it, which as a side note, can help with that candida yeast. So what this will do is absorb excess moisture. You also, of course, like I already said, you wanna make sure you are changing into dry socks frequently. When it comes to your hands though, if you're someone who works like in healthcare or in the food service industry, you have to wash your hands a lot, you are more at risk for getting that little inner trigo between your web spaces because you've got a lot of moisture trapping. So um, make sure that you dry your hands thoroughly each time you wash your hands. Apply a moisturizer to keep the skin hydrated and reduce friction. And whatever you do, don't wash your hands all the time with your rings on because the rings will trap moisture and uh, detergent from the hand soap and then cause a lot of friction, break down the skin barrier, and that will aggravate things for you. This is something I would never use. Topical Benadryl, um, topical diethylhydramine. It's, it's not effective topically. Itch is not going to be alleviated by topical diphenhydramine. If you've ever used this product and you found it effective, let me tell you how it's working. It has nothing to do with the Benadryl, which Benadryl is just a brand name for diphenhydramine, antihistamine. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the fact that this is a gel. And when applied to the skin, the cooling sensation can help distract the itch signal. But the actual drug in this is not doing anything. It's something I don't recommend. I don't find it useful. As a side note, if you are itchy, 
don't take over-the-counter Benadryl for itch. Um, it will just make you super sleepy. It doesn't act very long and it actually doesn't address the root cause of itch. The only reason why it may provide you a little bit of temporary relief because it is sedating. Now, this is a product that can be super helpful if you find yourself frequently getting hangnails. People who are at risk for hangnails are, well, again, those of you who have to wash your hands a lot for work, anytime you are at risk for dry hands, it can lead to a dryness of the skin around the nails and basically you can get a little tear there. Whatever you do, you don't want to bite at that. You don't want to try and pull it away because you are just pulling away skin that is protective. You're going to get down into the deeper layers of the skin. It's going to be even more painful. So what do you do? Well, you check out my video on how to get rid of a hangnail, but basically you want to soak the area um, in a little bit of tap water for a few minutes to soften that little hangnail nub. And then you want to take your nail cutters or your manicure scissors, make sure they're clean, use a little alcohol prep pad, trim that little nub in, and then you can actually glue it down with liquid bandage or crazy glue. And it'll glue it down so that it can heal. Here is an underrated product that I frequently recommend for people who have rosacea, as well as people who have acne. It is a topical sulfur. So sulfur is anti-inflammatory. While it can be a touch drying, it's typically very well tolerated, and it can be very helpful for the um, little bumpy outbreaks of rosacea. If you have persistent redness related to rosacea, uh, sulfur is not gonna address that. It addresses the bumps, but it doesn't address the persistent redness. What can address the persistent redness? Pulse diet laser. This also will not address the prominent dilated blood vessels that a lot of people with rosacea get. What can address those? Pulse dye laser. But when it comes to rosacea, you also have to uh, be mindful of your triggers and uh, avoid them. Uh, because if you can help your cause by avoiding triggers, such as unprotected sun exposure, that's a major one actually, alcoholic beverages, um, spices, spicy food, hot beverages, all can precipitate flushing, getting overheated. So taking measures to either avoid or control those types of exposures, elements, etc., can help cut down on flares of the rosacea. Here we have a cost-effective moisturizing product, glycerin, um, very hydrating and can actually help with reducing water loss at this viscosity. Maybe a little irritating. Um, you can use it on your lips actually for dry chapped lips. Tastes a little sweet, but it's perfectly safe to do that. You get this large bottle, $5.24. Then you have alcohol. So the reason to buy alcohol is not to ever put it on your skin, especially if you get a cut or anything of the sort, because that can slow down healing. Um, instead, the reason to have alcohol on hand is to like disinfect things like your nail cut, nail clippers, manicure tools. There is no good reason to have hydrogen peroxide around for your skin, but rather hydrogen peroxide is great for um, getting rid of that little pink um, microbial mystery goo that can build up around drains as well as any kind of uh, moldiness that might happen in places like around your sink where you have a little bit of tendency towards standing water but yeah don't put that on your skin because it really messes up the healing process so looks like Equate has a version of the carousel nail treatment. This is really great um, if you have nail fungus or if you don't. It's not actually going to cure or treat the nail fungus, but it will help to improve the health and appearance of the nail. You see, when you have a nail fungus, it slows down the rate of nail growth. And so this can kind of help the cause to improve uh, the discoloration. And it may also help in enhancing penetration of uh, antifungal medications into the nail. But if you have nails that maybe have seen a lot of abuse from a recent manicure, like a gel nail manicure or what have you, this can also help to resuscitate them. 
You can do, go with the Equate version or you can go with the Carousel version. Speaking of which, um, I've tried these from Carousel and they're really handy. They're these little nail patches, kind of like a Band-Aid, okay? But they really can help improve brittle nails, the d discoloration, roughness, and ridging of the nail plate. And it's really handy because it's taking advantage of the principle of occlusion where it has these ingredients, namely urea, under occlusion to enhance penetration. Getting stuff into the nail is tricky. It's, you know, a tough area to penetrate uh, effectively, but this can really help. Here's the intensive repair foot ointment I was just trying to find. They do have it here, front and center. Um, this is great. Great for callus, um, great for the nails. I mean, it's, it's great. Um, it's kind of, it's expensive, but you really don't need much. It spreads on the skin well. A thin film is all you need. I had this realization the other day as I was ogling anti-dandruff shampoos, as I often do. I mean, doesn't everyone? So I've seen these newer Head & Shoulders Bare shampoos. Zinc Pyrithione. Love that these particular formulations, in contrast to Classic Clean, do not have methyl isothiazolinone in the shampoo, zinc pyrithion. But what I just dawned on me, and this nicely illustrates, but the first time I saw this, I didn't pick up on it, is that this is like this is like a new type of shampoo packaging where look at this, you roll it up so you don't waste a single drop. Who is with me? Nothing more annoying than knowing you are down to the dregs. Like this happens with pumps, right? You know you've still got plenty of shampoo down there, but it's trapped at the corner. And you like have to whack the bottle in all these different ways to get the product to like get right up under. It's, it's, you know what I'm talking about. And I don't like taking this off in the shower. I feel like once I take it off, then water gets, it's a mess. So, I like this. I like this that you can squeeze out every single drop. Now, we were talking about sulfur earlier. They have a sulfur shampoo here. Sulfur is good for dandruff. It's anti-inflammatory. It has mild keratolytic properties. Um, now this shampoo, like most, does have fragrance, so if you're allergic, be aware of that, but it doesn't have methyl isothiazolinone in it. So if you have dandruff, um, and you've tried a lot of dandruff shampoos, try, try this. This is, this is actually the only sulfur shampoo that I regularly see in drugstores. I'm not saying it's the only one, but it's the one I see most often, Sulfur 8. Then they also have a medicated shampoo. Um, they're calling it medicated because it has salicylic acid, which is actually on the FDA monograph for dandruff. So that's why this gets you know medicated, but sulfur will help as well. This um, is another great option, and likewise, it does not have methyl isothiazolinone. Pretty, pretty decent price. Anti-dandruff shampoos, they they come they come at a steep price point. If you don't need a ton of product, direct it to your scalp. Then you have this hair and scalp conditioner in a jar um, with sulfur. This would be another option. Now this has menthol. If you have a really itchy scalp, menthol can help distract the itch. If you're allergic to fragrance though, you should avoid menthol because it can cross react. This also has um, fragrance in it as well. So just be aware of that. But that is, that's a product that you're not gonna hear about like on commercials and stuff because it's just, you know, very, um, what can I say? No nonsense. So Nizerol has come out with a liquid um, and an anti-itch liquid with hydrocortisone in it. You have to be careful with this kind of thing. Definitely can help with itch for sure, but it also can make certain itchy conditions worse in the long run. So just be careful, you know, make sure you're clear on what it is you are treating. Um, you also want to make sure that you don't get this um, on your eyelids, you know, have it run down on your face because it's not good around the eyes. Be careful in that regard. What else does this have? It's got dimethicone in it, menthol. Menthol's gonna help a lot. If you're not allergic to fragrance, menthol can help quite a bit in the tingling if you've got a lot of scalp itch. So that's interesting that Nizerol has come out with that. Uh, they've always had this, which you know, obviously is an anti-dandruff shampoo. It's ketoconazole, that's an antifungal. It targets the yeast that causes dandruff, but ketoconazole also can potentially be helpful if you have pattern hair loss because it blocks the enzyme 
enzyme that leads to potent dihydrotestosterone, which is responsible for the miniaturization process that turns your hair into a little baby vellus peach hair. And that's why you get, if you're a woman, widening of the central part. Um, men, you know, you have a receding, hairline, a receding hairline. So I'm not saying ketoconazole shampoo is gonna completely halt the process, but it can definitely support better scalp health. Um, and may, you know, alongside established um, treatments for pattern hair loss may, may help out. It also, by its effects on um, reducing malassezia, that yeast, can have an anti-inflammatory effect that also can support overall scalp health and improvement in terms of uh, your, your androgenetic alopecia responsiveness to treatments such as minoxidil which they have here, plenty of minoxidil, 5% uh, minoxidil is effective, 2% can be effective in women, but it is uh, more likely to be a dud. Some people don't respond to minoxidil. Why, you might ask? Well, minoxidil by itself is actually useless when you put it on the scalp. It has to be activated by an enzyme in your hair follicle. And turns out not everybody's enzyme is like, um, as willing to participate or as or is as involved in the process for those people in particular and there's no way to identify if you're that way or not other than minoxidil just doesn't seem to work so well for you but um, for people like that they can really turn a corner with minoxidil if they start applying tretinoin um, alongside the minoxidil because tretinoin may enhance penetration but it also may activate that enzyme that is necessary. And that might be enough to get you over the corner. Now, a group of people for which minoxidil is often incredibly underwhelming are people who are more advanced in their androgenetic alopecia, farther, further along in the process. Um, so to what extent adding tretinoin in that situation is going to make a huge difference? In my experience, it doesn't. Then you have another group of people who do minoxidil get you know results or results that are less than maybe they try it with tretinoin and that doesn't make a difference for them because it's not really an issue with the enzyme or maybe it makes a little bit of a difference but they want to push the envelope further another thing that can be considered is low level laser therapy red light therapy can help to activate that sleeping hair follicle and get it to go back into the growing phase of the hair cycle and also can help improve blood flow to the scalp delivering nutrients to the follicle necessary to grow hair because growing a gram of hair requires as much energy as it would take for you to do vigorous exercise using both your arms and legs for six minutes so like if you intensely did jumping jacks for six minutes that's how much energy it takes for you to to um, grow a gram of hair. While we're on the topic of minoxidil though, did you know, I pointed this out in some of my other videos, but you know, not everybody shows up to the party every day, so um, bears repeating, topical minoxidil actually um, shows promise for nail growth, probably because um, it helps to, you know, in theory, improve blood flow to the nail. So it definitely can be helpful. And I mentioned this earlier in the video, but people who deal with nail fungus, the fungus slows down the rate of nail growth. And that is to the fungus's advantage because it allows it to hang around in your nail and thrive and jive off of the keratins, which is what it likes. Um, so minoxidil applied to the nail can help kind of kickstart the nail growth process to kick out that fungus alongside fungal treatments, patients can get better results. So it definitely can um, help the nail growth as well. Word of warning though, if you use Rogaine, Minoxidil, doesn't matter if it's a brand name or not, um, be careful uh, who you come in contact with because there are case reports of kids who develop excessive hair growth um, because their dad or grandparent or whatever was giving them a piggyback ride. They were resting against the back of dad's head and the minoxidil got on their skin and they ended up growing hair there. It's not permanent, it goes away once you identify that. So it's not like you have permanently 
scar the child. But it's obviously a very distressing thing for parents to, to go through. Oh my gosh, why is my child suddenly having all of this hair in this random patch on their body? That is, that is why. Well, it could, you know, it could be why. But that definitely has happened. So just be careful. Right, we were talking about foot fungus earlier. Um, foot fungus is the same is the same beast more or less but same same bottle of tricks as as ringworm on the body if you are dealing with foot fungus athlete's foot uh ringworm these things you don't want to use because they very easily harbor the fungus and spread it to other places in your body um, i mean this is like a fungal paradise in here when, once you wash your skin where you've got fungus it's like oh thank you very much don't mind if i hang out in this little hotel here in the shower and then i'll hop on another uh, i'll hop on another location another cruise ship if you will next time you use me yeah don't use these in that situation likewise if you have um impetigo which i have a video on as a side note you don't want to use stuff like this either you want to make sure you're you know only using a washcloth that you can wash after each use um, and that you're not spreading that around to other body sites. Or if you have folliculitis, you know, a lot of people deal with recurrent bouts of bacterial folliculitis, especially in humid climates, um, it can really become an issue. I have a video all about that. If you're like, what the heck is she even talking about? It's these itchy bumps, look like acne um, on the body, uh, but it's actually a little bacterial infection usually in the hair follicle and if you have that and you use things like this you can spread it to other body sites so take a you know don't use those if that's something that you're dealing with instead just use like a boring old washcloth that you can put in the washing machine um, with just hot you know just wash in the hot in hot water hot soapy water you don't need anything in particular to clean you know if they're white washcloths you might want to run bleach earlier we were talking about hangnails and i went through that process that i outlined in my video on how to get rid of a hangnail but um you want to be careful you know i mentioned the liquid bandage you can also use crazy glue um it, it does basically the same thing but sometimes you might have an allergy to ingredients in those things uh especially if you're allergic to the glues and um nail fake nail glue then you you don't want to use that okay but an alternative it's not going to physically glue it down but it can really help act as a, a barrier is to just use petroleum jelly now admittedly as you go throughout your day that's not necessarily going to stay on as well um, and so it may you know rub off and then you're left there with the, the sore spot um, this little all over body balm though is great as like a cuticle ointment protector would be great in that situation as well. All right guys, Walmart did not disappoint. I hope this video was informative to you and that you learned a lot of tips and tricks. If you liked it, check out my video on the end slate where I go through the drugstore and point out even more dermatologist approved skincare hacks using simple, affordable, effective products that you may never have considered before. If you like this video, Video, give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe I'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye